Laid out in front of me are all the parts for pretty much as ball in a gaming rig as money can buy. But as everyone knows, if you want to get the maximum performance out of your hardware, you need cooling that can keep up. And for all its other faults, custom loop water cooling is still the way to go if you want no compromises, maximum performance, and near silent operation. Unfortunately, on the path to building a custom water-cooled system, there are a lot of pitfalls that at best can waste your time and at worst can actually damage your components. Well, that changes today. This right here is the Singularity Wraith, a case that was built from the ground up to make putting a custom water-cooled system in it as easy and painless as possible. Yeah, easiest water cooling my friggin' buttocks. So our plan is to throw this thing together with hardline tubing? Yeah. With hardline tubing in about the next hour. And this video is brought to you by the ViewSonic Elite XG270QG gaming monitor. It's 1440p, 165 hertz, G-Sync. It's got 98% coverage of the DCI-P3 color space and you can get yours at the link in the video description. While Alex is assembling the monitor, I'm gonna run you guys through the hardware for today. We've got an Aorus X570i Pro Wi-Fi motherboard. This is a mini ITX board, so even though this is a bit of a bigger case, it still takes a small motherboard because we gotta make room for all that water cooling stuff. We're gonna be running an AMD Ryzen 9 3950X, so there's a 16 core processor in here, and we're gonna be teaming it up with an RTX 2080 Ti Aorus Extreme from Gigabyte. And what's cool about this one is that it is pre-water Water cooled, meaning that it is basically slot in, tubes in, and go. For the rest of our water cooling, we're using a bunch of stuff from EK Water Blocks. So they're Coolstream SE240 radiators. I believe we've got, uh, yep, their Velocity D RGB CPU block, a bunch of their straight hardline fittings, as well as their Vardar Evo RGB fans. Then for storage, we've got Aorus's PCIe Gen 4 M.2 SSD, as well as a set of G-Skill Trident Z Royale with cheese. Actually, I think that's junk. I think this is actually their, uh, ah, yep, it's Trident Z Neos. So we've got what appears to be a 32 gig kit of 3600 C14. Nice, that'll be a really great pairing with our 3950X. Makes it sound like wine. All right, uh, well, we won't need that until later, but thank you. Yeah, um, we can put it there. I think it looks cool too. Yes. <laughs> Are we for real aiming to do this in an hour with Hardline? Uh, I don't know, hour and a half? Should we try? Yeah, sure. I wanna try. So the time is now 3.43 at 4.45. We are gonna be turning this thing on full of water posting. You got it? We got this? Yeah. All right, let's go. So I'll go motherboard. You want to unbox the case? Yep. It's actually kind of amazing to me that it's taken so long for a case like this to make its way onto the market because you get all these cases out there that are designed for water cooling, like with a 360 millimeter radiator mount in the front, a 240 in the top. Can I help you with yeah. that? Um, but they give no thought whatsoever to where you're supposed to put a pump and a reservoir. So Singularity is actually a super small company, but they are really dedicated to water cooling and building just like these gorgeous, super industrial looking designs. So let's walk you guys through some of the features that we're working with here. Oh, we apparently cheated a little bit. It already has an 800 watt power supply in it. Do you put that in there? Oh yeah, I did that to measure the power supply, okay. like the cable runs. That's fine, we'll give ourselves a two minute penalty at any rate. So right up here is where our mini ITX motherboard goes. We're using PCI Express risers right here to get our graphics card down to its um, you know, vertical mounted show off position down here at the bottom. Power supply goes here. And then I believe this spot over here is just for drives, isn't it? Uh, that's to hide your cable management. Oh, is that all it's for? Yeah. Neat. Radiators in the top and the front, and then the entire back of the case is actually fluid distribution and a built-in reservoir that leads down to the integrated D5 pump. Pretty sweet. Oh my goodness. Is there an RGB component to this? We have cable mod RGB stuff. Okay, I'm getting warm. This might be the time to 
It actually hasn't quite happened yet as of filming this video, but uh, I promised I would wear Marquez's merch if he hit 10 million before we did. So here it is. Oh God. Remove the front LED cover by undoing the three fasteners on the front panel of the case. So this thing here. Oh, but this is gonna light up super cool. Okay, I can't figure out how this strip goes in though, unless it goes in sideways. Oh, they recommend their own rigid RGB strip. Is that not gonna happen? Is that for the front only? I guess so. I have a lead on that front RGB strip. Nice. So we're good. Did you do the back one or am I doing that? Oh, uh, you're doing it. Okay, let's just peel it unceremoniously. <laughs> it's safe to guess that I can just cut this anywhere, right? Uh... So the RGB groove at the back seems quite a bit wider. It looks like I'll be able to get my strip in there quite easily. So that's pretty cool. How's our hour coming along here? Uh, it's 4.09. I think if we get this done before the end of the day, I'm gonna call it a win. That is like two hours for the build. I'm gonna get the motherboard prepped then. I don't think we're doing as bad as you think. You don't? No, we're doing all the hard stuff first. That's no. why the situation looks dire. You're, you already pre-installed the CPU. It's like a, a minute. You grabbed a four stick kit of memory. Oh, damn it. Well, that's fine. We can have can 16 we, gigs of RAM. Yeah, I think that's okay. Literally doesn't affect performance for gaming at all. How much pre-prep did you do on this? Because it looks like our M.2 slot is on the back and that probably isn't gonna fit. Uh, I just assumed that it went oh, here. Wait, there is one on the front. Yeah. Yep, it's packed in, packed in there pretty tight. So I gotta figure out how to get this off. Looks like it's just these two screws. Hey, I told ya, we're in great shape. Okay, so our SSD heatsink goes in there and this, what? does it just go on top? Actually, no, it's not great. <laughs> it fits well enough though. I think we can get away with it. All right, I'm gonna start running the cables. These are the ones that I got. I think they look pretty sweet. Hey, wow, I like it. Where's my CPU block at, Alex? Oh, here it is. Ooh. Yeah, you have a choice. So I can go with matte black plus silver or nickel and plexi. I'm gonna have a look at the graphics card and then I'll decide. Wow, you know your graphics card is hardcore when it includes a tube of thermal compound in the box. <laughs> Okay, well, based on this, I think the only way to go is the matte black and silver then. All right, well, this is gonna slow me down a little bit. My mounting hardware for my block needs to be removed and reinstalled because it comes with Intel mounting hardware on it. Something that made sense for a long time, but nowadays, there, does it? We have 15 minutes. Okay, panic mode time. Uh, I have no clue how the RGB works. No, if it wasn't for the RGB, We'd be in much better shape right now. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Oh Let's God. Get my block installed. I guess I can mount the motherboard now, though, right? Yep. So our time's up. I am honestly kind of tempted to abandon our RGB fan pursuit here. Yeah, that's fair enough. Okay, motherboard's in. So here goes our PCI Express extension, which conveniently covers up our pump here. So can I just plug this into the RGB header on the motherboard? So, so my plan to... was just to do like splitter on splitter. Okay, so if we're gonna have to put a mess of wires into it anyway, we might as well put a commander into it. Yeah. I'm gonna tear them out. All right. And I'm not gonna try and do it your way. There's too much stuff in here now. I'm just taking the rads out and then taking the fans off. That's Literally true. undoing the first 20 minutes of work. <laughs> what a waste. Well, I guess it's GPU time. Uh... I absolutely hate how gigantic this thing is. Oh, do we actually have to use that? <laughs> I mean, we don't have to, it's just, for better or for worse, it's an easy way to manage all the RGB on a bunch of Corsair crap and a bunch of fans in one go. What if I could put it right there? Maybe, yeah. That's not bad. Well, I guess it's loop planning time. Wait, do they have adapters to the one with the spacer? I have no idea how to make those work. They're three pin, but they don't have the four pin piece and the gap. This wouldn't have worked at all. There's only three wires, even though there's four spots. Okay, fine. Forget addressable then. We just go with the traditional ones. And we tear those strips out? Yeah. 
So I'll undo all the work you did at the beginning while you undo all the work I did at the beginning. So progress. Commander Pro is going to handle fan control and the RGB for these fans. And then, uh, how are we doing the RGB strips again? Uh, so they're just wired up to the cable mod thing. We're going to have to have a splitter and then oh, their proprietary thing that plugs into SATA. And how are we going to hide all of this? I don't know. Are we going to have to just Cable ties, lttstore.com. Actually, how do we even get into the reservoir? Is that down there? Oh my God, is it? Well, the GPU has to come out then. Okay. <laughs> we did not think about this at all. If we're gonna make use of the integrated, like, tubing runs, basically nothing we've done so far makes any sense. Yeah. I have to take this front radiator off again, don't I? I, I think so, yeah. There's no way we're hardline tubing this. No, let's not do that. After an email chain with Singularity, we now understand how the loop works. So this radiator is supposed to go uh, th this way with the fittings down. Now the whole thing makes a whole ton more sense. So I'm gonna focus on figuring out the RGB wiring while you start figuring out how to build the loop. And one of the other things that we discovered is that rather than trying to do hardline bends to reach all these places, which really wasn't going to be feasible, we are going to have to rely on some kind of fancier uh, fittings in order to reach all the little nooks and crannies. We are still doing hardline though, right? You know what? I'm on RGB duty. And you might be thinking like, you could come out straight from here and then do a bend and a bend and then go around. But getting bends that close to each other are actually really hard. Because when you heat one of them up, the other one unbends itself. It gets melty. <laughs> so yeah. it doesn't really work. Well, now that we've adjusted our expectations somewhat, this is actually going really smoothly. Oh, did I just twist that the wrong way? Wait, what the hell is this? Oh no, I forgot about the RGB strips. <laughs> we've already submitted to the ridiculous fittings gods. Why don't we just put one of these Jesus. in? No, yeah. no. Yeah, wait, wait, this, just hear me this out. This is like the money shot bend. You can't do a huge fitting for hear it. Hear me out. Just hear me out, okay? Humor me. There, boom. One bend. Oh, no. No. It doesn't even have to go that high. Okay, hold on, hold on. I, I went overkill, I went overkill. There. Yeah, that's not that bad. It's like, mm, yeah. Yeah, that's not that bad. So what I've decided is that the case RGB strips will be controlled with just like the uh, remote control. The CPU block will be controlled by the onboard 12 volt RGB header. And then all the fans will be controlled by Corsair software. Well, I think it's making tubes time. Like all things considered, this really doesn't look like it's gonna be super difficult. Sweet. I am uh, still working on RGB wiring. <laughs> so I've got it in the right spot. If I pull too hard though, I'm just gonna unplug this connector down here. Shoot, it pulled out, ah! I'm going to start actually cutting the hardline tubing. All that I need to do is just come in with a little measuring stick like this one. You put it in, figure out exactly how long your tube needs to be, mark that off and then cut it. For the ones with bends, I really like this jig right here that Alpha Cool has. So you can just come in and then kind of put it up against both your fitting. Let's say we're doing this one right here. Just fitting, the fitting, thereabouts, you yeah, lock it. And then you know that it's going to be about 90 by 85 or so. In fairness to Singularity, the instructions did say to do the RGB stuff first. So my personal method for hardline tubing is you cut it with the saw, but I find that it doesn't do a good job all the time. Like you can see there's a little chip right here. So you just cut it a tiny bit long and then you just take the belt sander and bring it down to the final dimension. If you don't have a belt sander, that's fine. It's really easy if you take just like some sandpaper, put it on a table, rub it around a bit. Come on. Yes. Nice. Yes. I have a dent in my hand. This is peak rat's nest right here. Hey Alex, how is the pump powered? Uh, is there even a pump in there? There, uh... That might just be a pump cover. Uh... <laughs> there's no pump. Huh, there's packing material. Oh man, I gotta run more power. 
I come bearing the world's ugliest pump. In goes our pump, which now actually contains a pump. All right, so we have the super small tube in there. So now we can just swing the radiator down and line it up just like that. And if everything is measured correctly, it should, oh, come on, come on, here, here, come on. I really wish that we could leak test this right now, like just this one fitting. So is that lined up? Uh, not quite. Okay, so it doesn't need to be slightly longer then? Yeah, seems like it. Okay. Do you want the LED strips that came with this case? What? <laughs> they were sitting next to it. You've got to be kidding me. <laughs> you know what though? I just noticed the one at the back is not sitting in the groove right. I just finished the wiring. Go ahead and cut. <laughs> so here are the skinnier RGB strips that those channels were designed for. Yo, Alex, remember that uh, RGB strip that I dented my hand putting in? Yeah. So long. What if you're supposed to run the RGB strip through from the other side? I mean, the instructions do say run the RGB first, but like, holy crap, just put a slightly bigger hole there. Okay, I think I've got it in the right spot now. This is gonna be one of our first 90 degree bends. We do have like jigs to get perfect 90 degrees, but I think that the radius is gonna be a bit too big for where it needs to go. So I'm just gonna do it by hand and then try and fit it. And I think it'll be fine. Yeah, that's gone so well so far on this project, Alex. Although it's not gonna feel super duper great, is you don't wanna wear any gloves because one of the key things is when you're bending it to make sure that if there's any like little ridges or stuff to get them out and you can only feel that with your bare hand. <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't sound like very good advice. So we've got this tube in here and you know, it's the right length, but I can't quite swing it around because of the fitting. So I took the screws out up here so we can just pull the whole thing up just a tiny bit and then just lower it down on there and I think we're gonna be perfect. Alex, the more tubing you put in here, the more challenging it's gonna be for me to finish my RGB runs. Well, it's not my fault that you've been spending, what, like four, Enough. four and a half Enough. hours. Enough, I don't, e I don't even wanna hear it. You know that this wasn't easy. I don't think I can fit the 24 pin under the plate. I have decided that I'm gonna run the 24 pin out here and I'm just gonna do this weird kind of curvy, thing here. A little crease here. Do you think that's okay? Uh, yes. Yes? At this point, yes. All right, I'm gonna trim it. <laughs> Why even ask? Okay, boom! I'm legitimately ready to help now. Um, we need this to bend from like here to here done. Okay, so that's a that simple on. 90 degree? Yep. Let's see if I remember how to do this. Okay, do you dare me to just free ball bend this 90 degrees? Sure and it bubbled. But this just seems to be kind of crappy tubing. Okay, well, I'm gonna try again. I think we're ready. Three, two, one. Looking fine, actually. I think this is the point in the video where we have to admit that this is not easy, though. No, this is definitely not easy. Or fast. How do I get all the melty stuff out? Give it a little go we go and then you should be able to just like blow it out. <laughs> I think that too pretty much nailed it. Yeah, it looks pretty good. Awesome. This is all I can do to tighten the collar on this fitting. Try and kind of push against it with one finger. <laughs> it's home stretch time, guys. So I'm doing up the power connectors for the graphics card right here. So naturally, Alex left me the trickiest bends. And one of the tricky things here is that it still has to stay perfectly round and straight where it goes into the fitting there. I don't really have a way of checking this, unfortunately. I think the tubing is good in terms of like the length and the angle. I'm gonna call it, I got it. All right. I see your confidence level is high. The uh, system is full of paper towel. Yep. Okay, lttstore.com. <laughs> Oh, dang. Pretty sick, hey? That's our res. Oh, is it even going in? Get in. Uh, slowly. Get in there. Oh, actually, this is a good learnable moment. See how our pump is spinning, and it's not technically running dry. There's lots of water in it, but it wasn't actually moving much fluid. That's because there's too many bubbles caught. So what we need to do, find the on-off switch on our power supply. Where the devil is it? There it is. See? Let that gigantic bubble come out. 
Then fill up our reservoir a bit more. This is really cool. You can really see the bleeding process. All right. So now the pump can grab that water a lot better. You want to hit the power button metal? Oh, 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 stop, 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 stop. stop. I'm stopping, I'm stopping. What's going on? Uh, there's, there's a really big leak. I'm not entirely sure where. A really big, oh. It's the pump. The pump? The, oh God. You've got to be kidding me. Okay, how easy is it to get at the, oh, oh no. <laughs> yeah, easiest water cooling my friggin' buttocks. If you want to be able to easily drain a loop, you need to have a drain port at the very bottom of the system and so conveniently, they provide one right here. And we didn't put like a proper drain fitting on it or anything. So we're just gonna use the fill port. We're gonna flip it upside down. Really? We might not even have to do that. We can probably just stopper this, flip it, which will take this gigantic air bubble and put it in the pump, do some O-ring surgery and put it back on. Yeah, we actually can do that. Um, dare me to power it on for a couple of seconds to, oh, I just destroyed our tabletop. Oh, rip. Oh, come on! Um, yeah, what is that water there? Oh. What's this? How are we gonna dry that? I don't know. That's like never, ever, ever gonna dry. <laughs> I actually don't know if it got all the way in. I put it in really tight last time because I was hoping it wouldn't leak, and now I can't get it off. There we go, got it. Wait, what's that sticker we didn't remove? Uh, I think that's the sticker that said to read the manual before doing anything. <laughs> My arm is stuck. <laughs> okay, so now draining the loop is a little trick here. It's fine. One, one second, we can just get a little bit. Just get the funnel. Just a little bit. Just get the funnel. Bin. Look, I mean, this is oh. gonna be off in oh. like a matter of moments here. Alex, it's leaking all over the table. Yeah. Move that way. You move, move your body that way. Oh, jeez. <laughs> and then I'm gonna... There's a lot of water. What is stuck there? What am I stuck on? Okay. See, that would have been fine. <laughs> I don't remember the last time I had a water-cooled build go this poorly. It's still very, very, very full of water. Oh God, where's the water coming out? Uh, must be the pump. Cool. Okay. Actually, yeah, that's basically fine. Neat. Let's just get this mains power away. <laughs> yep. <laughs> So I just took apart this alpha cool pump here and yeah, you can clearly see that instead of around the outside, it's supposed to go on the front, just right there like that. Oh my God. Does the case come, does, I saw them. I fucking saw them. I saw them and I was like, yep, <laughs> f me. O-rings in the fucking case. I even saw them. I was like, I saw them and I wondered what are they for? I get, I I can guarantee you that this goes on exactly where it's supposed to go. Perfectly, yep, right in there. And of course, it's a white one too, so you so it looks better with the clear acrylic. In fairness to us, I just read the whole manual. Doesn't mention the pump once. Pretty sure in revision 1.1, it's going to. Okay, but that's good news then, because we didn't have any other leaks. As far as we know, but yeah. So we can just put the pump in and as long as everything works, we're basically good to go. I, I saw them. The next day. It's actually shocking how well this dried this out. Like even the water that was stuck between this back cover here and the plexi is gone. So I feel pretty good about that the power supply and stuff is probably dry. So let's give you guys an update then. Alex has made some modifications. One is that the uh, system has uh, <clears throat> been put back together. Uh, the next is that our funnel, there we go, now has an air return channel, so it should pour a little bit easier. And last but not least, the O-ring is now clear. And we also leak tested it with the leak tester, like we probably should have in the first bit. Yeah, that would have been smarter. Okay, so theoretically, this is just a matter of dumping water into it and being off to the races. Yep. Let's do it. My RGB wiring could still be all wrong. Oh, jeez. You gotta credit this case with being very easy to bleed the bubbles out of. Yep. It's actually a pretty cool reservoir design. Because it's so thin here, 
the bubbles kind of come out, slam against this wall, and then have to make their way to the top. I like it. Oh, okay. I feel like blue channel is not plugged in on this one. Okay. Yeah, because this one's going like RGB, and this one's going just like RG. If I had to guess, one of the things is just like... Theoretically, once Windows boots up, this will be it. Moment of truth, not bad at all. So how many hours was this? It's currently noon on the third day. Yeah. We didn't work on it for the full days though. So you say like eight hours? Yeah, I think eight hours is About pretty eight safe. Hours? Okay. But we're done, pencils down, final peel. Whew. And that is one good looking machine. How did you get the RGB fixed on the back panel? I poked it with a stick. Gorgeous. <laughs> So for all the pain, we actually ended up with a pretty sick looking machine. And it's pretty compact for something with quad 120 millimeter worth of radiators too. But can it game? So we might have a problem, Alex. What? Uh, we might have officially outgrown Doom as a test title. We're running at a locked 200 frames per second. It <laughs> can't even drop below it on wow. ultra details at 1440. The good news is it looks great. So this ViewSonic Elite monitor is actually using the same LG one millisecond response time IPS panel that we've seen before, which means that as you're whipping the camera around, you retain a lot more of the image sharpness than you would on a traditional IPS. The other thing that I actually didn't realize about this going into it is that it is overclockable. So we'll just use our little nipple-based navigation system down here, which by the way, is the best. Oh, geez. That's fine, you'll be back soon enough. And boom! We can flip over to 165 hertz, suckers! Oh, this is a good chance to check our temps, though. So our GPU is sitting at a frosty <laughs> 33 degrees. Max of 45. And where's our CPU at? Max of 59. Nice! Man, the system ended up looking good, though. Oh, yeah. I'm glad we stuck with the RGB, even though it was a nightmare. <laughs> You know, maybe I'll come around to hardline tubing now. It wasn't that bad. Especially yeah. if you're willing to blow like $100 on fittings to make it more palatable. Now we've got Shadow the Tomb Raider loaded up and that looks like freaking butter. That is so smooth. Yeah, even from the angle here, it looks pretty great. Well, I mean, that's the benefit of an IPS display, right? Yeah. All right, so real talk time. This was far from the easiest computer build we've ever done on Linus Tech Tips, but in fairness to Singularity, the water cooling part of it, and particularly things like the maintenance with the dedicated fill and drain ports, actually wasn't that bad. You just need to familiarize yourself with how the layout is supposed to work and some of the pieces that you're gonna need, especially with respect to fittings, to make your life a lot easier because this is a no compromises machine. It's in this small form factor with four by 120 mils worth of water cooling capacity. There are 16 processing cores in it, so you could render out huge jobs in a jiffy. It's got a freaking RTX 2080 Ti that hit 45 degrees after running 3D Mark times by, and there's been no compromises on the looks either. I think the accents on the cables actually ended up looking darn good, especially with the pink and purple RGB color scheme that we've got going on in here now. And Despite the occasional uh, you know, green wire visible somewhere, the hard line tubing, we managed to cram it in there. It doesn't leak anymore. And the best part of this whole build is that it'll cost you just $5,000 with peripherals included. Wait, <laughs> that's, that's not really a plus. Nope. Well, okay, fine. Even if one of these isn't looking good anytime soon, maybe you can check out the monitor. And if not, Maybe you'll get lucky when we give away two of these at the end of this video. The ViewSonic Elite XG27 is wicked for people who have anywhere from, I'd say, an RTX 2060 all the way up to an RTX 2080 Ti like our build here. That'll easily push out the 165 frames per second that you'll need to fully take advantage of this monitor's capabilities. And every frame is gonna have that nice, fast one millisecond response time. Of course, if your rig can't always maintain 165, then G-Sync can step in to lend a help helping hand to ensure that your animations are as smooth as they can be. Now, lots of frames are good, but ones that are crispy are also great. So, 
head over to store.mkbhd.com where you can use your awesome monitor to, you know, with 1440p resolution to see those amazing shirts and other merch items that are available on store.mkbhd.com. Back to the XG270QG. It's got a built-in headphone holder on the side, which we actually really liked. RGB lighting on the back, and of course, a robust stand with height adjust, swivel, pivot, and all that good stuff. So big thanks to ViewSonic for sponsoring this video and letting us indulge in a build as sick as this one. Huge thanks too to Sven and Daniel from Singularity Computers for sending us one of the first ones of their new Wraith case, as well as a little bit of help via email and EK and Gigabyte for sending us the vast majority of the hardware. And of course, congratulations to Marquez for hitting 10 million subscribers. Again, check out his merch, shop.mkbhd.com and also LTTstore.com.